Hello everyone, I'm Veronique Kiermer, Executive Editor at PLOS, and on behalf of PLOS, I would like to thank you for organizing and for contributing to OpenCon 2015. Um, this was the second annual conference for open access um, researchers in their early careers, for students who are dedicated to open access, open education, and open data. And um, I had the privilege to attend the conference and I must say it was truly a wonderful event. Um, it was really inspiring and heartening to hear um, what the open science innovators are thinking of and, and doing. And, um, and really kudos to that open access community because um, a lot of um, the ideas that had been discussed in the previous um, OpenCon conference were already turned into action. So who knows what will stem from this year's conference. And I'd like to share with you a few of the things we're doing at PLOS to serve the open access community in the hope that perhaps these things might inspire you and, and help support these initiatives coming out of OpenCon 2015. More than 14 years after our own founding, PLOS is still engaged in a robust effort to build and support communities that are helping to change the way science is communicated. I think it was John Tennant during the meeting who stressed the power of the combination of open access publishing on one hand and the sharing of scientific concepts through blogs on the other, and all that in the context of a true research community vibe. Directly related to this and, and of interest to those in the early stage of their careers, this year we reactivated the student block a forum for students from a variety of institutions, disciplines, and different levels of education to communicate their thoughts on open access science, interesting research, and other things. I encourage you to check out the student blog on the PLOS Blogs Network. This past year, we've also held the first PLOS Early Career Researcher Travel Award program. This was to recognize efforts by PLOS authors in the early stages of their career and to support opportunities for them to present their research findings to a wide audience. In the essays that we received from Travel Award participants, we heard concerns from young investigators about affordable access to the scientific literature, limited funding for their own research, and limited training and funding for communicating their work. These themes were reflected at OpenCon in discussions about article processing charges, the complicated nuances of copyright licenses, and the difficulty of data sharing. Over the years, PLOS has tackled these issues and developed some resources. For example, we offer publication fee assistance for those in need. We have produced educational guides, such as How Open Is It? And finally, in 2014, we have introduced a strong data access policy that is really encouraging authors to share their data in a usable and effective way. But we're not stopping with this. In the next year or two, you'll see some wholesale changes coming from us. At PLOS, we imagine a future where research is published without unnecessary delays and continual assessment and commentary are provided by a robust and ethical system of visible, engaged, pre- and post-publication peer review. We imagine a global editorial and reviewer-contributor community that includes young investigators, appropriately trained, recognized, and incentivized. This is of particular importance for graduate students and those early in their careers. I do want to address one point that is often misunderstood. At OpenCon, some early career researchers express concern that publishing in open access journals will harm their career because of the perception that these journals aren't prestigious. I was gratified to hear several speakers address this misconception directly, as we all know this is simply not true. We're proud of the quality of content published in our seven plus journals, and there are plenty of other highly respected open access journals. In fact, what is true about publishing in open access journals is the increase in exposure, reach, and influence that an article can have as interested readers, educators, policymakers, and other researchers share, reuse, and remix that open access content without restriction. I'd like to close by mentioning that in a recent Q&A with PLOS, Dr. Bruce Alberts said, momentum for change must come from the young. Yet, as you all well know, the young do not often hold positions of power. Alberts and a few of his colleagues, all eminent scientists and scholars, understand that established individuals must actively advocate for change. 
whether that change is related to evaluating the merit of work at the article level rather than the journal level, or providing recognition for contributions such as reviewing manuscripts. They've started an initiative, Rescuing Biomedical Research, that seeks to help bring together and support suggestions for change in science policy infrastructure. I urge you to continue to get involved in creating the landscape that you want to see in as many ways as you can and keep knocking down the barriers. Um, we at PLOS are here to work with you. We want to support you in promoting open access and we know it's no longer only about open access. It's about open data, it's about open science. So let's work together.